I added dual GPUs to this low-cost budget office PC, and now I can almost triple my frame rate using a little piece of software known as lossless scaling. This might be the smartest budget gaming hack out there, or it could be the dumbest. I actually wasn't sure how well this was going to work out, but it turns out that this thing actually puts down way better performance than I ever thought it would. As you can see, I've got two GPUs installed in this budget office PC that I picked up from eBay a little while ago. These aren't high-end GPUs at all. In fact, both of these are pretty low-end, entry-level GPUs, and I kind of racked my brain going around what kind of combo I could do with this setup here. And the main thing I really had to think about was power consumption, because I really didn't want to have to replace the power supply in this unit. And what I've got is an Optiplex 770. It's got a 260 watt power supply with no extra connectors for a GPU, so we don't have a 6 pin or an 8 pin. It's powered by an Intel i7-9700, so we've got 8 cores, 8 threads. I've got 16 gigs of RAM, and it's got dual PCIe slots. The top blue slot is an X16 3.0 slot, and the bottom black slot is actually an X8 3.0 slot. So we're not going to be able to install like high-end GPUs in that bottom one, but that's totally fine because we only need that second GPU for frame generation using lossless scaling. It's a pretty awesome setup, and again, I went through a bunch of different GPU combinations. Originally, I wanted to take this Optiplex and just add all Intel art cards, but unfortunately, the motherboard in this thing does not support resizable bar, even with the latest BIOS updates from Dell. So that's kind of out of the question. We wouldn't see great performance. So I went over to some lower end cards, and what I've got here is an RTX 3050 with 6 gigs of VRAM. It's the low profile version, but you could always get this done with a full size 3050 also. And when it comes to my secondary GPU, I opted to use the AMD Radeon RX 6400. Lower end card with only 4 gigs of VRAM, and it'll fit perfectly in that second slot because we needed a single slot GPU to go there. I only have the low profile brackets for both of these cards here, so I've just removed the bracket completely. But if you did something like this, just make sure you get that full size bracket for them. And once we install that RTX 3050 up top, you see there's not much room in between to let it breathe. But luckily, that 3050 doesn't pull that much power, and it's not going to hit thermal throttle in this. We'll take a look at everything by the end of the video. But the last thing I wanted to do here was just add a little more RAM to the 770 Optiplex. So I've got another 16 gigs of RAM here. Just used cheap RAM from eBay. It's DDR4 running at 2400 megatransfers per second. Now once I've got everything installed, it looks a little something like this, and I did kind of set up a makeshift bracket just to hold everything in place. If I had the full-size brackets for these GPUs, I'd definitely use them, but I do more small form factor builds over here, so it's not something I usually think about. So I've been up and running for a little while now. I've got the NVIDIA driver installed and the AMD driver installed, and uh, it's been working pretty decently so far. As you can see, we've got the Intel Core i7-9700, 8 cores, 8 threads, and yeah, it would be really nice to have a higher-end CPU, but we're working with a lower-end Optiplex from eBay. I did add 16 more gigs of DDR4 at 2400 megatransfers, so we're actually up to 32 in total here. We've got the GeForce RTX 3050, that low-profile unit with 6 gigs of VRAM, and of course, we've got that AMD Radeon RX 6400. The RTX 3050 does outperform the RX 6400 for sure, and plus we've got more RAM. Only 6 gigs, but uh, we're going to see what this thing can do. Now there is a little bit of setup that needs to be done here for everything to work right. First things first, we're going to open up our settings in Windows, and we're going to head to Gaming, Game Mode, Graphics, Advanced Graphics Settings, and the default high-performance GPU needs to be chosen. We're going to be using the RTX 3050 because this is the higher end unit that we've got in the system. Next thing we need to do is configure lossless scaling. And again, it's seven bucks on Steam. I've done several videos. Personally, I think it's well worth it. Once you open it up, look a little something like this. Right down here, this is really important, the GPU and display section. When we're talking about a dual GPU setup, the preferred GPU is the card that's going to be generating the frames, and since our RTX 3050 is more powerful than the RX 6400, we're going to have the RX 6400 do all of the frame gen here with lossless scaling. So I'm going to make sure that that's chosen. Next up, 
frame generation type right at the top here. Lossless scaling frame generation 3.1. Mode, I'm gonna go with a fixed mode, but you can also use adaptive. Fixed is just gonna give us a multiplier and uh, we're at two but you can go way up. And I don't think the RX 6400 is gonna handle past three. Might not do well at three, but a multiplier of two should be great. And basically what this should do is double our base frame rate. So whatever that RTX 3050 can run a game at, we should be able to double it here with lossless scaling. Performance mode is something that you can test. Uh, sometimes it does help out and flow scale will help out if you're generating frames on a lower end GPU. Basically, this downscales the input frame to estimate motion flow at a lower resolution. So it might not look as good uh, with this set, but it can really help out in the performance area. I'm gonna leave it at 100 for now. We're gonna leave performance off. And I usually just leave my sync mode at default, max frame latency at three. And we can also do some scaling here if you wanted to. I'm only gonna be using lossless scaling here for frame gen. But yeah, we've got everything set up correctly. Um, multiplier set to two, lossless scaling frame gen 3.1, max frame latency three, and our preferred GPU is that AMD Radeon RX 6400. So now I'm gonna leave this running. We're gonna start a game. The first game we're gonna be testing here is Cyberpunk 2077. And I wanna show you the settings that I'm using. We don't have frame gen enabled right now. We're gonna to go to settings, graphics, I'm at medium, but we're using DLSS because we've got that 3050 transformer model, balanced video, 1440p. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be with the RTX 3050. Um, we're at like 50 FPS, 48 to 51 FPS. And I'll tell you with uh, lossless scaling, if your GPU can get to that like 38 to 45 mark, Adding another GPU for some frame generation is really going to help out. It's all about that base FPS, and that's the next thing I kind of want to talk about here. So up in the top left-hand corner, I've got Afterburner running. This is our base FPS with no frame gen. RTX 3050, about maxed out, 99%. 3050 clock, 3050 power, or a TGP here. VRAM usage on that card, and the temp. Right under that, we've got the i7-9700 and more info on that. But then at the very bottom, we've got the RX-6400 low profile. Clock, VRAM, TGP, and temp. We're plugged into this right now and it's actually using a bit of it. You can see it does jump up anywhere from like 12% up to 40% right now. We're not using frame gen, but we're gonna enable that in just a second. I'm actually pretty impressed by what this little, uh. RTX 3050 is doing, and I know we've got some DLSS going on here. I figured we'd be like down in the low 30s at 1440 with this. So in order to get lossless scaling up and running, we're gonna open it up. And from here, remember lossless scaling, frame gen 3.1, multiplier two, we're using the Radeon RX 6400. I'm gonna scale, go back to the game, and then at the very top, I will have another FPS listed. And this is gonna give us our base on the left-hand side. Remember, we were sitting there like 48 up to 51, 52. And then we have our FPS with the generated frames using that RX 6400. And you can see the usage on that 6400 has significantly increased, especially the clock. We're only using it to generate these frames with lossless scaling. But now we're up from, let's call it, 48 FPS up to 96 to 101. So we are doubling the frame rate here and it feels really nice. So it used to be that we got a lot of um, weird artifacting going on and just ghosting with let's say our crosshair here. If I move into a dark area right here. So it used to be that it couldn't track this very well. Our HUD elements would get scrambled, but with the latest versions of lossless scaling, it's improved dramatically. And um, another thing is just out of the side corner, especially with like the lines on the ground there, you could see the generated frames. Now it's pretty smooth and input latency is very minimal here, given that we've got that extra GPU. But yeah, now with lossless scaling, I mean, this little RTX 3050 is trucking along at 1440p.
while we're here, we might as well try 3x with lossless scaling. So I've disabled it, but we're going to go up to 3x. And I'll tell you, I think our flow scale may need to be taken down just a bit. I'm going to go to performance mode and we'll do 50% on the flow scale. I don't know how this is going to perform. Okay. So there you go. All right. If you take a look in the lower left hand corner with the uh, pattern on the ground, you can see the weird artifacting that I was talking about. Now, this isn't here when we're at 2x with the setup, but at 3x, it does introduce a bit more. I mean, it's got to work a little harder to generate those extra frames. But taking a look at what kind of frame rate we're getting now on an RTX 3050, albeit with that RX 6400 generating frames, from 50 FPS up to 150 FPS at 1440p with Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, this is pretty crazy. And if you've got that RTX 3050, chances are you're probably only going to be gaming at 1080. It's just going to be even higher there. But yeah, 3X isn't too bad. With those really tight patterns, I do notice a little bit. I'm going to check one more time here. Yeah, it's just with the really tight patterns but it still looks great like this for sure. I mean, I'm really impressed by how well this is working. Next up, we've got Spider-Man 2, and on the RTX 3050, this game is a little all over the place. We're at 1080 medium settings right now with DLSS set to balance, and in some cases, I was seeing this go up into the 70s, but when you're moving fast, you can see, I mean, we're down 30s, 40s with it. So I do think that uh, loss of scaling frame generation is going to help this one out quite a bit. Let's go ahead and scale it. And we're just going to do base setup, flow scale, 100%, 2x multiplier. Okay. Not too bad. A little bit of ghosting around the body and, uh, you know, when there's trails going on. But it definitely feels a lot smoother like this. And maybe if even if we went to, like, performance mode with lossless scaling frame gen, uh, take that flow scale down just a bit. Might help out a little bit, but I wouldn't mind playing it like this for sure. Getting a much higher frame rate. And it just feels so much smoother. I also wanted to test out Borderlands 4. And I've never tested this on the RTX 3050. I'm pretty surprised by how well it's actually running. Because we're at 1440p. 1440. We're at low. DLSS set to performance. You can see as low as we can go with this. And, I mean, we're averaging, like, 38 to 40 FPS. And with most systems that I've tested this on, it just kind of falls on its face. But I do know we'll be able to get some more out of it here with lossless scaling. Now, I'm not sure how well it's going to run once we get into a fight and things like that. So, I'm actually going to take this down to, let's do 50%. We're just going to do a 2x multiplier. It's not horrible. Wow, this is pretty amazing, actually. Major dip there. I mean, I kind of suspected it. And like I mentioned, I mean, most people aren't going to be trying to run these games at 1440p, even with a setup like this. So 1080 is going to net you a lot more. Uh, you get that base FPS up there. Frame gen's just going to help out even more. Just going straight into this one with lossless scaling enabled. 1440p handheld mode with DLSS set to balance. Uh, looking at a base of a little under 50 FPS, but with lossless scaling enabled, we're at around 95 FPS on average. And it feels super playable. So this setup actually worked out way better than I thought it would. Is it for everybody? Of course it's not. And I do wish we had more room in here. 
I probably would have went with something like an RTX 3050 up top and a GTX 1650 down below just to try to keep it as cheap as possible. But due to space and power constraints, this is what I opted to use and it does work out really well. I'm super surprised by how good this actually performs with lossless scaling up and running. If you end up doing something like this, I mean, with basically any PC, let us know your CPU and GPU combo that you're using in the comments below. It'd be really nice for other people to kind of get an idea of what's working and what's not. And I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I wanted to do an all arc build. I've got one on the way, so keep an eye out on the channel. If that's something you're interested in seeing, make sure you hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.